Good afternoon, good morning, or good evening. Welcome to today's webinar, Integrate Oracle Data Using Salesforce Connect, hosted by Progress. My name is Cindy Romig, and I'll be your host for today's event. Before we begin, a few housekeeping tips. This webinar is being recorded. A link to the presentation will be sent to you via email in the next two to three days. Also, when you join the webinar, by default, the audio bridge connected you to Voice over IP. If you prefer to use your phone instead, just choose the phone option and you'll be walked through the connection to the bridge. We welcome all questions as we go through the presentation. We will hold a Q&A after the presentation during this event. Please submit those as we go along. I will collect all of those and we will cover as many questions as we can during the session. If by chance we do run out of time and are not able to address your question, we will certainly reach out to you afterwards. And if you have experienced or do ho happen to experience technical issues, please enter a message and I'll be happy to respond as soon as possible. I'm pleased to introduce our speakers today. Joining us is Greg Stasco, Principal Sales Engineer with Progress Data Direct, and Nidal Patel, Senior Integration Consultant in the Center of Excellence for Salesforce Integration with Aperio. Greg is a respected connectivity veteran, having worked for leading technology companies such as Apple and NCR prior to his coming to Progress Data Direct. While at DataDirect, he has worked with leading partners such as IBM, CA, Oracle, Salesforce.com, Tibco, Adobe, and MicroStrategy, only to name a few. He brings a tremendous knowledge base of today's industry and marketplace to his customers and innovative ways of addressing their connectivity requirements. Middle works as an integration architect at Aperio. On customer projects, he defines integration strategy to connect Salesforce.com with other cloud and on-prem enterprise applications. He works with various middleware tools, including Web Methods, Informatica, MuleSoft, and Jitterbit. He is certified Salesforce integration architect designer, a Salesforce certified administrator, Salesforce certified developer, and Salesforce Certified Sales Cloud Developer. Quite a few initials after his name. Well, now it is my pleasure to hand it over to Middle to kick things off. Middle? Hi everyone, this is Middle and welcome to the webinar. In this webinar we are going to talk about how we can integrate Salesforce to uh, different Oracle systems and how we have been doing it so far and with the introduction of Salesforce Connect, how the game of the integration is changing. So the typical, the typical uh, integration of Salesforce with the different applications, specifically like Oracle e EBS, Order Management Suite, Oracle Warehouse Builder, or CPQ, we have seen that we need to integrate these systems to Salesforce. And when we are integrating these systems to Salesforce, we typically use a middleware in between. This middleware could be from Oracle itself, it could be Oracle Service Bus, or Fusion, or any other industry based middleware which we have seen a lot. And what happens in this scenario is the middleware takes care of connecting to Oracle or different applications. It takes care of uh, taking the messages from or the data from these systems massaging it, changing it to the format which we want to send it to Salesforce. It, these middlewares have a connectors to Salesforce, so um, when anybody is working on the integration, they just focus on the data, not about how to connect to Salesforce. And, um, and the data is moved to Salesforce. There are many other options, not only the middleware, but people have seen, I've seen people using just the manual upload of the files, or the different applications, they expose their APIs, and we can call those APIs directly from Salesforce. Salesforce has got many APIs, and instead of using middleware, many times people can call directly uh, these APIs. But in a very typical scenario, middleware is the most uh, common use. 
And what happens is when we are defining an integration with the middleware with Salesforce, we have several options. And the integration can be started from Salesforce or it can be started from middleware. And if a integration is getting started from middleware, with a middleware connects to Salesforce using the Salesforce connector and it can use standard SOAP or REST-based API from Salesforce. If there are lots of data and thousands and millions of rows, Salesforce also exposes a specific API which is called bulk API. And in bulk API, um, you provide batches of data and Salesforce takes care of processing them in batches in one by one. Several times, these only these two options are not enough and you have some business logic which has to be applied at the interface and then that time Apex says on the Salesforce side you can create Apex uh, classes and expose those classes as services. Middleware can connect to these classes and send this data to them. There could be scenarios where the integration has to start from Salesforce and in those scenarios sales, uh, Salesforce relies on the external web services to be exposed and typically these web services are exposed at middleware side. Salesforce, if any event occurs, can send a message which we call outbound message. It can be sent to those web services which are exposed on the middleware. And in many cases, you may directly, instead of using the outbound message, you can directly call those web services from the, from the FX classes. When we are designing this integration, we have to first find out what is the business process, business requirements for this integration, and um, how those are, what are the different objects which we need to integrate, and what are the different fields we need to integrate, what are the different translations which we need to find so that we can code all this in the middleware. Obviously, like there may not be always a happy path, so we have to think about what are the different kind of exceptions may, that may occur. It could be exceptions at the system level, like system not available, or it could be at the data level. There could be some something wrong with the data on some typical transaction. So we have to design this middleware applications, middleware flows, so that we handle these exceptions. We have to think about the data quality, how we are handling the duplicates of it, duplicate data and stuff like that. Salesforce is very interesting. Salesforce is a um, multi-tenant environment. So it's not only one org which is using the Salesforce, but there are multiple orgs. And to be fair with all the orgs, Salesforce has these different governor limits. So when we are designing this application, we have to think about these governor limits when we are working with Salesforce integration. And over the years when I'm working on this different uh, integration with Salesforce, we have been seeing uh, different ways and we have been hearing that uh, it takes a lot of time to, in, to make this integration happen. There's like, you need to learn middleware, you need to have a knowledge of what are the pros and cons of different middlewares, and anytime if we have to change the existing integration, it becomes complex. So to handle all these shortcomings, Salesforce has been working on on, on different ways to integrate integrate uh, Salesforce with Oracle or any other application. And uh, I've been hearing from Greg that Salesforce Connect is a great way to integrate uh, Salesforce. And with that, I, I would want Greg to explain to in this webinar about how Salesforce Connect changes the game and how it is so interesting to connect to Salesforce using the Salesforce Connect. Thanks, Middle. That was a good backgrounder in terms of what the current landscape looks like in terms of the integration approaches available to someone. What I'd like to do is do a little bit of a review for folks who may be a little familiar with what the Salesforce Connect offering is from Salesforce. You may recognize some of these slides. Um, I've borrowed some materials from Salesforce's rollout of what was initially referred to as Lightning Connect. It has since been rebranded by them as Salesforce Connect. Some high-level points is that it's intended to be a very approachable, more clicks, less code type of an approach for doing integration. 
one of the key takeaways is that it is not a strategy for duplicating or copying data. It is real-time access. And one of their strengths is that everything you see with Salesforce Connect is empowering the underlying Salesforce One platform. In a little bit more detail, the initial release of Lightning Connect was in winter 15. And at that point, um, some of you may be familiar that it was released as a read-only capability. Over the last uh, few releases from Salesforce, uh, Salesforce Connect has been enhanced, and now it's available with full CRUD support. But the same objectives still apply, which is a very approachable integration strategy. Uh, it's a strategy that precludes one from having to have all their data copied into the Salesforce cloud, and it is something that in many circumstances enables integration to begin happening in a matter of just a, a short period of time, often just a few minutes. Let's look at some of the underpinnings of Salesforce Connect. We've mentioned that Salesforce Connect, by definition, is a real-time access strategy. You'll hear the term data access by reference as opposed to actual ETLing or moving of data. A key takeaway with the discussion of Salesforce Connect is its reliance upon the uh, somewhat new data access protocol called OData, or Open Data Protocol. This is a new standard that originally came to the market backed heavily by SAP and Microsoft, but it has since been turned over to the OASIS standards organization and is now something that is, is driven as many other data access standards are. You can see at the bottom a place if you would like to get more information on the OData standard, take a look at uh, www.odata.org. Gives you lots of information about uh, who's producing OData, who's consuming OData, and various patterns available for it. But understanding the reliance of Salesforce Connect on OData is a key takeaway we'd like to leave with you today. And as I said, the Open Data Protocol, it's fairly straightforward. Um, I think the best thing to remember about it is you'll see some references to it being called out as the SQL for the web. So it is a specification that's intended to facilitate querying data, but it does so in a way that it's compatible with leading internet protocols such as HTTP and HTTPS. So really it is a specific REST implementation that is uh, optimized for doing data access across disconnected environments such as the web. So what you really end up with is fundamentally Salesforce Connect is a data federation strategy for those who are familiar with that terminology. The intention is that you can readily get set up with a point and click user interface you're having the ability to talk to data where it resides, not data that has to be copied into the Salesforce environment. And Salesforce presents the data to you in a way that should be familiar to most Salesforce admins and Salesforce developers. There's what looks somewhat like Salesforce custom objects, but in this case, they have a new entity referred to as a Salesforce external object. And once that data is available in those objects, you can do many of the things that you're used to doing with standard Salesforce data or custom objects, such as using it in mobile apps, creating lists, tabs, SOSL and SOCL queries, etc. And again, bottom line, this all comes about because of the ability to connect to data sources that are presenting an OData compatible interface. What we'd like to do now is actually do a quick walkthrough to demonstrate how one would connect to, in this case, data residing in an Oracle 11G database. And here we happen to see a small table of equipment that is uh, something that's going to be needed in our Salesforce environment. So while this happens to be accessible and being shown here in a SQL query tool, we're going to walk through what one would do to have this available in a Salesforce tab. To do this connectivity, we're going to leverage Progress's Data Direct Cloud connectivity service. This is a service that provides the ability to talk to numerous cloud data sources, as well as various on-premise data sources, such as Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, et cetera, even if that on-premise data resides behind a firewall. That service exposes this data either in a SQL interface, such as ODBC or JDBC, or in an OData-compatible fashion. We, of course, for Salesforce integration purposes, are going to be looking to talking to an on-premise Oracle system using OData on the exposing side and having that data be integrated into a Salesforce Connect environment. So as I mentioned, Data Direct Cloud is our service. It's a hosted offering that basically provides a unified interface to a wide variety of data services. Uh, it is available at datadirectcloud.com. 
we encourage folks to go out and take a look at it, but uh, let's step through now and see how one actually can use this to get connected. I mentioned we provide the ability to talk to data even if it resides behind a firewall. To do so, we have to establish a secure tunnel between the on-premise network and the DataDirect cloud service. To do so, we're going to leverage the on-premise connector that you see highlighted here with the green arrow. This requires installation on a Windows system that has access on the same network that your target data source happens to be on. When one installs and configures that appropriately, you end up with a Windows service that has a label associated with it so you know which connector you have. You may have a connector running on numerous machines providing access to different data sources. You have credentials in it that validate talking to the DataDirect Cloud service. And you can see with the green arrows that we have uh, everything defined appropriately and we are good to go to actually start defining our data source. With DataDirect Cloud, one of its strengths is the ability to provide a common interface into a wide variety of systems. You can see through this uh, billboard of data sources that uh, the leading enterprise data sources and cloud sources are available for connection here. As we've said, the focus of the webinar is how might we connect to an Oracle specific instance. In this case, we're talking to an Oracle 11G database. But you could use the same thing if you were talking to a J.D. Edwards implementation that was actually running on DB2 on iSeries, or if you were talking to a Siebel system running Oracle underneath it, you would choose the appropriate data source and walk through a very similar configuration process. So when one begins to define their data source, the fundamental requirement is understanding, is my data behind a firewall or is my data directly accessible in an open port on the open network? In this case, we are going to be connecting behind a firewall, and so we need to specify that we're connecting to an on-premise source versus a cloud source. And by specifying on-premise, that means that we are going to be talking through a connector ID such that uh, we have a secure access path from the cloud through the firewall. Just as we saw that connector ID label specified when we installed the on-premise connector, we're going to leverage that for communicating here. So here you can see the green boxes are the blocking out of my credentials for my user ID, password, and server address. But going in over the standard Oracle port of 1521, I am leveraging a connector ID associated with that Windows install that we did a few screens back. And you can provide a name for your data source that just is anything for your own bookkeeping purposes. In this case, I'm calling my data source Oracle Webinar. To validate that everything is good, you hit test connection at the top and you see the nice little green bar that says connection established successfully. So what we've done is created a data source on a hosted service. We're going through a tunnel, through a firewall, talking to an on-premise Oracle source and that handshake appears to be going successfully. So in this ca uh, case, we're pretty well down the path to being able to expose our data via OData. However, that access so far has only said I can talk to the data source. I may have a huge population of databases and tables associated with that database, and it may not be appropriate, whether it be security or process-wise, to have all of those resources exposed. So what we're going to do is simply choose to expose a particular table, the equipment table that you saw uh, earlier in the SQL query. We want to... Uh, Expose it, so the check mark next to the equipment name means we are going to expose all the columns here. And the key next to equipment ID is to indicate that we have defined a primary key on this particular table. That is something the OData specification requires to be able to properly navigate through the data set. So if one is not automatically detected when talking to your underlying data, you can manually define it by clicking in the key column next to the different items. So what that ends us up with after all of the definitions is a service address that you see highlighted with the green arrow. So if you know a little bit about OData, what we've said is, oh, from an OData client side or an OData consuming side, I need to speak to a service that is presenting me with OData compatible 
information. And in this case, I have the Data Direct Cloud service, and I'm specifically talking to the Oracle webinar element, and that Oracle webinar item is what is enabling me to talk through the secure tunnel to the underlying Oracle system running behind the firewall. And that's what the address we need to feed to Salesforce. So Salesforce Connect is able to understand where does my endpoint reside. So from within Salesforce, anyone who has some familiarity with doing Salesforce development should recognize this window. Whether you have a corporate sandbox or whether you have a personal free developer account, you can go in and here I'm in setup mode and I'm typing external to be able to quickly get to the navigation to set up an external data source. Key takeaway, as I said before, with regards to specifying that address of our destination data source is I need to tell Salesforce what's on the other end of the wire, so to speak. How do I speak to my target data? And in this case, there's a number of parameters Salesforce gives you because they support a, a wide variety of strategies for connecting to OData endpoints. So this happens to be an OData 2.0 service. We are using a JSON format versus an XML format. Data Direct Cloud uses a named principal context rather than an individual validation strategy. And what we need to do now from this definition is say, let's call this my Oracle data. And we need to now enable Salesforce to be able to say, oh, there are some resources that I've exposed at that data source. We're going to synchronize metadata. And now you see the same equipment table that we've been speaking to is now available such that I can incorporate that data into my Salesforce environment. This is the creation of the Salesforce external objects that we spoke previously. And if you see in the upper right corner here, we have a section for the standard tabs that are available within Salesforce. And what we'd like to do is say, well, this equipment information, I want to have real time available inside my Salesforce space. And so what I've done is created a tab. And by choosing that tab, you can see the same data being brought in that you saw in the result of the SQL query. And what is different here is without any sort of manual updating or synchronization or you know, whether it's a, a simplified or a complex ETL process, being able to talk to the data real time provides business users with certain levels of access that they might not be able to achieve otherwise. So here, for example, if you look at the first line, equipment ID 1. It shows up as the stage and carpet. If in another tool, perhaps somebody, or even from within Salesforce, that, that since this is now read-write capable, someone modifies that record and changes it from the stage and carpet to the stage and runners. The good thing with Salesforce Connect and real-time access, as the, the slide says, if data is changed or updated, the next time I access that data from the tab, I'm doing a real-time retrieval from my on-premise Oracle system, and I'm able to see that that updated data is what is reflected here in my tab. So uh, I, I love the reference that Salesforce will make when they're talking at their world tours and at some of their developer forums. Access by reference means no stale data. I'm able to provide my users with real-time business data, whether that data on-premise happens to be uh, a data warehouse, an ERP system, a system of record for, um, for shipments, whatever it happens to be, the idea that you're no longer faced with, you know, do I have to up my date, update my data, excuse me, hourly, nightly, weekly, whatever, accessing by reference means you are talking in real time. And that really is a walkthrough of what we wanted to demonstrate with how easy it can be to connect to Oracle using OData, in this case, our Data Direct Cloud Service, put an OData front end on top of an Oracle system without modifying the underlying system at all. And the key takeaways in middle, uh, feel free to jump in with issues you raise, such as you know understanding tech technical requirements and objectives. Even the Lightning Connect, or nowadays referred to as Salesforce Connect, is a new integration pattern. Does that obsolete any of the previous patterns that we've been used to seeing in the Salesforce space? 
That's a great question, uh, Greg. Now, we, this is another pattern which we help us to uh, integrate as another option which is going to obsolete some of the patterns and uh, make it easy, but most of the other patterns could still be there. There are still business use cases where you want to move data in the Salesforce for some, for so many reasons. So this is one of the other uh, tool in your toolbox, which makes life easier in many cases, but not in all the cases. Excellent. Yeah, and that's pretty much what we've seen as well, that there are certain business drivers or technical requirements that will lead one down the path to check out certain types of technology as opposed to others. So while we're very excited about what Salesforce Connect brings to the table, we don't believe that it is you know, the cure-all to all types of integration requirements for the Salesforce space. I'd also like to emphasize uh, we've had engagements with customers where they will be hesitant to go down an integration path because of concerns about complexity. From our perspective, that's where partners such as Aperio can be so strong, where they have such a diverse background in terms of the different integration experiences they bring to the table. And whether it's Oracle or other data sources, feel free to leverage the partner community, which is such an important part of the Salesforce space, that this is you know, a way where you can really ramp up the, the speed with which you can get your integration done. And part of everyone's experience in Salesforce nowadays should be to leverage the assets that Salesforce is making available to the community. If you go to the link associated here in Trailhead with Lightning Connect, you can learn to understand some of the basics that are available in terms of the foundations for Lightning Connect, and then many of the use cases where you can do relating of data that is externally resident with data that happens to be resident in Salesforce. And finally, you know, we would love to extend the offer for folks to put this kind of a solution, you know, into your own environment, put it through its paces and kick the tires and use it with your systems. Um, we offer the ability to do everything that, you know, that we've walked through here on a free 30-day no-charge basis. You can connect to your on-premise data. You can do read-write support. You can access uh, the leading data sources. Uh, the only obligation is that you need to fill out a registration form, and from that point on, you're able to be up and running. And I guess, Cindy, with that point, that sort of brings us to an end of this session. Okay. Well, great. Thank you so much. I see that we do have a lot of very interesting questions uh, that have come in, and there's, uh, I'm sure, several that both Greg or Middle could take. Let's see. Um, the first question, when defining the Salesforce external data source, is the principal user the same as the one defined on the data direct connector or defined as a separate user for the data direct connection itself? I'll take that one, Cindy. The principal user is the user ID that you used for the credentials associated with the DataDirect Cloud account. So in my case, when I was uh, defining my external data source, that actually was my account ID and password that enabled me to sign in and then have the end-to-end -end connection established. Okay, great. Next question here says, where can I find sample OData feeds to try this out in a development organization? Middle, you and I have spoken about this before where one of the great learning vehicles is to go out to the odata.org site that we mentioned before. There's a great deal of free information available there, services that you can play with using Lightning Connect or Salesforce Connect. Independent of the Data Direct Cloud product, even, there are tools such as Postman that one can utilize, which is a Chrome extension. Uh, Middle, how do you encourage folks to get familiar with some of this new technology? Um, all of the ways which you are saying right, are great. And if you want to just play around with, uh, with Data Direct, one of the things which I did was uh, just sign up for a dev org at Salesforce. It comes with the data and the Salesforce data itself can also be exposed as an O data. So you can work around that too and play around. It, it's great that there are a lot of free options out there because uh, 
if you have the ability to do so. Uh, Microsoft Azure gives you some free tools that you can use to talk to a SQL service there using the Data Direct Cloud service. Uh, they also have the ability to do some tooling to see the different ways you could expose that data using built-in Azure facilities. And you may see that there are simpler and more complex ways of solving the same problem, which we think it's good for folks to get an understanding of what the lay of the land looks like in that regard. Okay, great. Um, and thank you so much for sending in your questions. They keep coming in, and I hope that we can get to most of them. All right, the next question would be, are there particular areas that are not a good fit for Salesforce Connect? Middle, how about you taking that one? Yeah, so there are some specific areas when you really have to move your data in Salesforce. They are not only the read-only data, or sometimes it may need some kind of translation. So those are the typical uh, scenario where it is not not a good case. Yeah, we've seen customers that Salesforce Connect has been a little bit of a challenge in a particular area, and that is with reporting that currently Salesforce doesn't support using external data in the traditional Salesforce reporting environment. For those of you who are interested in that functionality, it's my understanding Salesforce is starting to entertain some private customer trials of that functionality. So if that is a capability that you are interested in having, reach out to your Salesforce team to see if that is something they may be able to uh, get you to participate in. Cindy, I see one where there's a question about um, people needing to expose more than just tables. Um, could you elaborate a little bit more as to what can be incorporated? And the answer to that is the OData specification itself is somewhat oblivious to what it is you're exposing. It depends on the service that is providing this capability. So from the Data Direct Cloud perspective, we're able to expose synonyms, views, and tables as uh, directly accessible entities that you would be able to choose to incorporate onto the Salesforce side. The one thing that I don't know that anyone has yet figured out a strategy for is being able to map stored procedures into um, a no data service. That's something that uh, may require some enhancements as the OData specification evolves. But I think that has been one of the, I guess, technical challenges some customers have faced that uh, those organizations that rely heavily on stored procedures may find the Salesforce Connect interface and capabilities perhaps not to be the best fit for them. And I see we have another question here. Uh, do we have the ability to transform or check data quality in the driver? We're using Informatica and it has information um, uh, transformation and mapping to do this. Unfortunately, that's where you end up facing, you know, there are pros and cons of the different tools. Uh, we currently don't offer any sort of transformation or mapping uh, at, at the Data Direct Cloud level itself. We've had some customers that have chosen to pursue the mapping as, you know, being done at the SQL level in the database, that they've done some things with views to be able to uniformly transform data from one layout, perhaps, you know, whether it's maybe it's date time or whether it's certain character manipulation, and they've done it that way. So that's a situation where you need to analyze the capability of the different tools that you're considering and see, you know, basically it's a checklist of who supports which features and which ones are vital and which ones are ones that you may have to find alternatives to. All right, I do see another here that has just come in. Why would someone opt for your solution since Microsoft SQL Server offers its own OData functionality? Middle, you and I have spoken about this one before with customers where here's a situation where I mentioned the importance of understanding OData as the underpinning of a solution like this. A, there are a number of ways one can expose data via OData, and Microsoft offers some tooling around their, uh, you know, .NET and WCF and IIS that uh, do uh, offer SQL Server customers the ability to expose data in an OData compatible fashion. And it works, you know, I can't speak ill of it. It's a 
little different level of complexity compared to what going into Data Direct Cloud and doing some, you know, configuration of uh, particular text frames and selection of boxes compared to installing .NET classes. So, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we encourage folks to understand the options that are out there and the SQL Server strategy is one provided by the vendor, which is different than Oracle, for example. Oracle does not offer a direct OData service. Middle, do you see many vendors that are, uh, you know, directly on the OData bandwagon nowadays, or is it still pretty much that there's going to be some layer of, of a gateway or a middleway providing this type of capability? Yeah, so most of the time you would need some middleware kind of functionality in between, but I have seen the approaches to the direct, on the, specifically on the cloud one, is, is the easiest one in my opinion. There is no infrastructure to be think about. It's all on the cloud. You just start directly using it. And some of the folks whom I showed this to, they, they were just uh, ready to use it within minutes, not even hours. So I was really being very impressed with how the progress to direct is so simple to use and so intuitive. And I think that's been uh, one of the strengths where we've had some very quick evaluations that have, you know, led customers to continue to investigate the capabilities of Salesforce Connect. And and one thing I also want to point out, Greg, is like we try if the pricing of uh, Data Direct uh, or the Salesforce Connect is on number of connections, and uh, we could use Data uh, Data Direct Connect or to have multiple data sources connected to the data direct and from there you just use one connection from the Salesforce side. So that way there are some advantages also to use if you're using the progress data direct cloud. Yeah, that, that gets into some licensing subtleties with Salesforce Connect that if you look at the, uh, I guess the public facing information about uh, Salesforce uh, Connect licensing, you'll see that their license model is on a per endpoint basis. So where I had to find my one Oracle data source as Oracle webinar, that that would be one endpoint. And if I had a SQL Server source that was perhaps my product information, that would be another endpoint. And without some sort of an overlay, each of those becomes an incremental cost. Data Direct Cloud provides an interesting capability in that we can act as an endpoint multiplexer so that Data Direct Cloud looks like the endpoint and the data sources that reside behind it end up, um, we shield Salesforce from licensing those as separate entities. Middle, if I could ask you a question, how are you seeing customers in terms of their interest in Salesforce Connect uh, and, you know, where do they think it might be attractive or what what encourages people perhaps to keep going with the traditional integration patterns that they may be more familiar with? It's, it's, it's a new one, uh, just like any new technology. A lot of excitement with the customers. They want to see how it works, how it used. At the same time, there are people who are a little bit skeptical about like, oh, it's, it's pretty new. I want them, want to see being more mature. But I've seen more and more people want to try it out. They still, there are, they have been doing integration in a traditional way, and they have the integration team, and they still. That's why, like, many of them still want to opt to the traditional, going with the traditional way. But I'm seeing that uh, businesses and the Salesforce side of the, uh, like Salesforce administrators, Salesforce developers, they are seeing it as like really simple way to connect to the outside world and not having to learn another piece of software, another middleware, so that's a big plus. So they have, they have been really excited about use, about the Salesforce Connect uh, functionality. I've seen a couple things where I think people, like you mentioned their reluctance to adopt new technology. When it first came out, it was read-only. That was a barrier for a number of customers. And then that got enhanced um, or you know, updated for full read-write support in the fall of 15 for winter 16 release. And now it seems the reluctance comes up because of, I mentioned the lack of support currently for incorporating external data into Salesforce reports, as well as there is an inability to incorporate external data for triggers and workflow. That 
those are barriers I think that we'll need to see some improvements made on the Salesforce Connect technology overall to have perhaps a greater level of uh, interest and adoption amongst the community, especially for the larger customers, I think. I agree. And your point, like you were right on the target with the point about when it came up, it was a read only. So that was one of the things which, which uh, made people a little more hesitant to use Salesforce Connect or that time Lightning Connect. And I think seeing Salesforce do the, you know, regular cadence of upgrades and enhancements is also something that shows it is a strategic new offering for them. And I think you're going to see them continue to add new functionality to it, to enhance its ease of use, to just make it more integral to how a Salesforce customer will pursue being able to bring in data that for whatever reason doesn't make sense to bring into the Salesforce cloud. I agree, and I, I personally am very excited about this. These were great questions, and uh, I appreciate the audience um, putting them forward, and I'm very happy to hear how Greg and Mitchell were able to provide their, their insights and their experience with us. I thank them very much. I'd also like to thank our attendees for joining us. This pretty much wraps up our webinar for today. We look forward to having you on future Progress Data Direct webinars. Look for us on our webinars page for any additional upcoming events. Thank you again and have a great rest of the day.